With all the award enthusiasm, we decided to add a second category to the award, the City of the Future Prize. And for obvious reasons. Cities are growing rapidly, with over half of the human population already living in cities worldwide. We will face many challenges. Challenges on food, transportation, pollution, energy, waste. Issues we can only solve by working together proactively. But we're hopeful. We find trust in the fact that Ted, our partners, and the beautiful city we're now in, share the same vision. Therefore, I'm proud to announce that Deputy Mayor Geels will grant, for the first time, on behalf of Amsterdam, the City of the Future Prize. Please welcome Deputy Mayor Geels. <clears throat> Thank you, Diederik. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor for me to be here on behalf of the city of Amsterdam and to announce the winner of the TEDx Amsterdam City of the Future Award. As you said, more and more people are living in cities. More and more cities are the future. And finding solutions for the major city challenges is crucial for the people, for the planet, and for prosperity. And I think we in the Netherlands are good in it. And when I'm abroad, people ask me, why is it so natural for the Dutch? And then I say, first of all, we took a lot of risks in history and we made a lot of mistakes. For example, we sold Manhattan to the British. <laughs> But more importantly, Amsterdam has, to, Amsterdam has a history in finding solutions, creative and innovative solutions for city challenges. We have a history in it, and I think that's very important for the future. We struggled against water, we struggled against fire, we struggled against diseases, and we succeeded. And solutions are always starting with ideas, ideas for the future, new ideas for mobility, for health, waste, water, food, ideas worth spreading. And that's why it's a perfect match between TEDx Amsterdam, the city, and this City of the Future Award. An award that is relevant to all of us. An award that fits well with the City of Amsterdam. An award that's worth winning. So Diederik, the time has come. And the winners are Rosella Ferraro and Alexandra Suma. Thank you. Please come on stage. Please share your uh, idea to the audience and the world. May I have the clicker? I will get one. Thank you. Beautiful. No? Have you ever played with one like this? Sure you did. Probably when you were a child, or probably you still do with your kids. I was always so fascinated by these colored propellers. The way they move, the way they react to nature, The wind, it's so joyful. But isn't it funny how this romantic scenario can drastically change if we move the same object from our hand to our head? <laughs> you know him? <laughs> yes. How many of you will feel comfortable in walking around like that, despite from the person up below? <laughs> Not me. Maybe he would, but I mean, he also has quite a lot of weird habits. So. 
Today I'm not here to sell you colored propellers or to talk about my former Prime Minister Berlusconi now. Today I'm here to show you how to use the movement of these propellers to produce clean energy without having to feel uncomfortable. Yes, I'm talking about wind energy and I'm sure that probably the first thing that comes up in your mind it's something like this, isn't it? And if I say wind energy in the urban environment, you would probably think about something like this, if it comes up, this. Oh my God. I mean, we all want to produce our own energy, but if it has to look like this, I would say, not in my backyard, please. Well, my drive is my wish to contribute to a cleaner world without having to destroy the pleasure of walking around our city, looking outside our windows. Driven by this goal, together with my, with my team, we have been working very hard trying to find a solution that could match both the energy efficiency but also the aesthetics. It wasn't easy, but we made it. And the solution is Arvis, Integrated Roof Wind Energy System. In the name is the entire concept. Arvis is a roof which, by means of its geometry and shape, can harvest so much energy. It, it embedded inside a vertical axis turbine, and it doesn't impact the aesthetic of the building. But I want to show you with the video how it works and what it looks like. Here you see the Vertigo building at the Eindhoven University of Technology, just a few kilometers from here. Within a few months, the first pilot unit of Arvis will be built on top of it. The way Arvis can generate so much energy is by making use of both the direct wind flow that goes into the roof and the one that first hits the facade and then, thanks to the louvers, is captured and guided inside. The internal shape then accelerates the flow so that when it hits the turbine, it has a very high wind speed. The acceleration drastically increases the energy generation. So uh, to give you an idea, if with the same turbine, the same size before, you would probably just be able to warm up a cup of tea, now with only one harvest, you can generate enough energy to supply 11 apartments, 11. And without having to destroy the way you're used to seeing your building. And to quote one of the architects that we have interviewed, he defined the harvest as the crown on top of the building. My dream is to give to society a new way to look at renewable energy. They don't need to change our lives, our habits, the way we used to live in our houses, no. We are the ones who invent them. So let's invent them that they can match with our wishes. If we want a green world, we don't need to paint the roads green, but harmoniously integrate nature with our lives. And if this is what we want, then let's start with the wind. Thank you very much.